Welcome to the Deep Dive, where I uploaded my transcript for the podcast and have two AI hosts talk about it. They may go into more depth than I went into. So without further ado, here's the Deep Dive. Ever find yourself just like completely baffled by what somebody does? Yeah. It's like they do something so out of the blue. You're left thinking, did they even think about that for a second? Right. Well... That's exactly what we're diving into today. Okay. Impulsivity. Oh. And to help us kind of unpack this whole thing, we've got an excerpt from, uh, it's called Impulsivity, the Why of Things. Oh, that's To guide our deep dive. It's fascinating, you know? Yeah. Because while we all have those impulsive moments. Oh, yeah. Like grabbing that extra cookie when you know you shouldn't. Oh, for sure. For some folks, impulsivity is like this dominant force. Right in their yeah. lives. Yeah. Especially for those with certain personality disorders. Right. And I think a lot of us, you know, we have that friend or family member or coworker who just seems to act without thinking and it can be so confusing. Oh, absolutely. So this deep dive is all about understanding that, understanding impulsivity, particularly within the context of what the source calls cluster B personality types. You might be more familiar with kind of the clinical names for these disorders, but the source uses slightly different terms, which I think is a really insightful approach. But before we get there, let's start with the basics. Yeah, for sure. What is impulsivity? The source defines it as acting without considering the consequences. Okay. Driven by urges and a need for that instant gratification. It's that I want it and now feeling. Yes. Regardless of what might happen later. Like, remember that time I decided to dye my hair blue at like two in the morning? Oh, wow. Totally impulsive. Yeah. Definitely regretted it later. I bet. Well, that's a fairly harmless example. Yeah, it was just hair. Yeah. Yeah. But when impulsivity becomes a pattern, it creates instability, not just for the person, but for everyone around them, too. It's true. The source really drives that point home with a story about the speaker's housemate who, get this, left their partner for somebody else during the pandemic. Oh, wow. Just like that. During the pandemic. Yeah. Talk about impulsive. Wow. That's that's intense. And what's powerful is that the speaker admits to still processing that whole situation and relating it to their own experiences. You right. Know? It reminds us that this stuff is complex. Even those who study it are still figuring things out, too. Oh, for sure. OK, so we've got the basic definition of impulsivity. Mm -hmm. But what really got me thinking was how the source distinguishes impulsivity from spontaneity. OK, yeah. Like impulsivity might be quitting your job on the spot. Right. While spontaneity is surprising your partner with a weekend getaway. Oh, nice. What do you make of that distinction? Hmm. That's a great example. I think spontaneity has an element of thoughtfulness. Okay. Even if it's like a quick decision, you're still considering your partner's feelings, their schedule, all that stuff. Right. Impulsivity is more about reacting to that internal urge without that filter. Without thinking it through. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. The source says impulsivity can be a way of coping with emotional distress or seeking that that immediate satisfaction regardless of the potential fallout. So almost like an escape hatch when things feel overwhelming. Exactly. Yeah. And that brings us to how impulsivity plays out across different personality types. The source focuses on what it calls uh, cluster B disorders. But remember, it uses... Uh, alternative names. Right. Like instead of antisocial personality disorder, it uses the term uh, impulsive disregard disorder. Right. Or ID. ID. OK. And for each of these disorders, the source dives into how impulsivity kind of manifests in really specific ways. Interesting. So maybe we can start going through those one by one. Yeah, let's do it. Where do you want to start? Let's start with ID then. OK. This is where you see a strong need for control. OK. And immediate gratification. Got it. Their actions are often selfish disregarding yeah. the safety or well-being of others, yeah. all to satisfy their own urges. The source gives some pretty intense examples. Think reckless driving. Right. Manipulating others for personal gain. Wow. Even engaging in illegal activities. Wow. It really paints a picture of how that disregard for consequences can be so destructive. Absolutely. It's not just about making a rash decision. It's about this, like, fundamental lack of consideration for rules or boundaries or the impact on others. And we have... Uh... ESFD, uh -huh. or extreme self-focus disorder, which aligns with what we traditionally call narcissistic personality disorder. Right. Here, impulsivity is all about protecting that inflated sense of self. Right, right. Imagine someone with ESFD feeling their ego threatened. Okay. Maybe they're criticized or someone else is getting more attention. Yeah. 
that's when those impulsive actions kick in. They might yeah. lash out verbally, make a risky financial decision to prove their superiority, or even abruptly end a relationship that's like challenging their self-image. And the source has this great anecdote about someone impulsively getting into motorcycle racing just because their housemate was a professional racer. Wow. It's like they had to one-up them no matter the risk. Exactly. It highlights how in ESFD, impulsivity is often driven by that need for validation. Yeah. And maintaining that sense of grandiosity, even if it means making choices that hurt themselves or others. Then there's EID or uh, emotional intensity disorder, which the source says is similar to borderline personality disorder. Okay. Now, this one is especially interesting because the source really emphasizes how impulsivity in EID is a direct response to those intense fluctuating emotions. Oh, wow. So imagine being flooded with fear or anger or sadness and feeling this overwhelming urge to just do something. Anything. Anything, yes. To escape that feeling. To escape that feeling. That's the core of impulsivity in the ID. That's intense. So it's less about logic and more about finding a way to regulate those intense emotions in the moment, even if the actions themselves are, are harmful. Precisely. The source gives examples like reckless spending sprees when they're feeling empty. Okay. Uh, Self-harming behaviors to cope with that emotional pain. Right. Substance abuse to numb out or even jumping in and out of relationships. Oh, wow. Because of those intense feelings of attachment and fear of abandonment. It makes you realize that these impulsive actions, while destructive, are often coming from a place of deep emotional distress. Absolutely. It's not about excusing the behavior, but understanding those underlying drivers. Mm. And that understanding can be crucial when it comes to supporting someone with EID. All right, we've got one more to cover. DISD, or uh, Dramatic Attention-Seeking Disorder, mm. which is similar to what's clinically known as histrionic personality disorder. Okay. Now, with DISD, impulsivity takes on a more performative quality. Think of it like this. Someone with DISD feels like they're fading into the background, so they need to do something dramatic uh -huh. to pull the spotlight back onto them. Right, okay. So it's not just about acting without thinking. It's about acting without thinking in a way that guarantees attention. Exactly. And the source points out that this can manifest in all sorts of ways from like making dramatic pronouncements or starting arguments to engaging in risky behaviors or even creating elaborate lies. It's almost like their impulsivity is fueled by a need to be the center of attention. Yes. Even if it means putting themselves or others in uncomfortable or even dangerous situations. That's a great way to put it. The source uses the example of someone suddenly quitting their job in a very public, theatrical way just to make a scene and get people talking about them. Wow, that's that's pretty intense. You know, we've talked a lot about how impulsivity plays out in these different disorders using the source's um, alternative terminology. But what I'm curious about now is the real world impact. Like, what are the consequences of impulsivity, not just for the person, but for for everyone around them? Yeah. Because I imagine it can be pretty messy. Oh, it can be incredibly messy. Think about it. Impulsivity by its very nature means actions are taken without considering those consequences. Right. So those consequences, well, they tend to pile up. And the source doesn't shy away from that. It talks about how impulsivity can impact relationships, finances, careers, you name it. Yeah. It's like this ripple effect that spreads out and touches every aspect of somebody's life. It's like a storm that sweeps through. You yeah. Know? yeah. Leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Relationships are strained or broken. Financial stability is jeopardized. Careers are derailed. It's, it's a lot for anyone to deal with both for the person struggling with the impulsivity and those around them. And for those loved ones, the source really highlights that constant anxiety of not knowing what's coming next. It's like walking on eggshells, always bracing for that next impulsive act. Right, because there's this underlying fear. Like, mm -hmm. what's going to happen next? Will they spend all of our savings on a whim? Oh, God. Will they suddenly disappear for a week without a word? Will they say something hurtful in the heat of the moment that they later regret? That unpredictability can be incredibly draining yeah. and damaging to relationships. You know, it's interesting because the source also talks about the internal experience of the person struggling with impulsivity. It's yeah. not like they're doing these things just to cause chaos. Right. There's often a temporary sense of relief or satisfaction yeah. after acting on an impulse. Right? Absolutely. In that moment, it can feel like a release. Oh, okay. A way to escape discomfort or satisfy a craving. But as the source points out, that feeling is usually fleeting. Yeah. It's followed by the crash, yeah. the consequences, the guilt, the shame. 
And yet they often get caught in this cycle, seeking that short-lived relief, even though it leads to more problems down the line. So it's almost like their emotional state is hijacking their ability to think clearly about the long-term consequences. Exactly. And that's what makes breaking free from this cycle so challenging. The underlying drivers, mm -hmm. you know, the need for control, the fear of vulnerability, the craving for validation, those are still there, mm. fueling the impulsive behavior. It makes you wonder, what can you do if you're dealing with someone who's highly impulsive? Is there any way to navigate that situation without constantly feeling like you're on edge? It's a tough question. And the source offers some really practical advice on this. It stresses the importance of setting clear boundaries. Okay to protect yourself from the impact of their behavior. So it's not about controlling them because you can't. Right. But controlling your own reactions and protecting your own well-being. Exactly. It's about recognizing that their impulsivity is their struggle mm -hmm. and you can't fix it for them. Right. But you can create a space for yourself where you're not constantly on edge waiting for the other shoe to drop. But setting boundaries can be hard. It can be. Especially when it's someone you care about. Did the source offer any advice on how to actually do that? Because I think a lot of people struggle with that. The source doesn't go into specifics about how to set boundaries. It's more about the importance of having them in place. Right. But I think one key aspect is communication. Okay. Clearly and calmly explaining how their impulsive actions impact you. Right. And what you're willing and not willing to tolerate. So, for example, if someone's constantly borrowing money and not paying it back, mm. a boundary might be... I'm happy to help when I can, but I'm no longer comfortable lending you money until you've repaid what you already owe. Exactly. It's about being firm, compassionate, and consistent. And remember, setting boundaries is not selfish. It's a way to protect yourself and maintain a healthy relationship, even if it's a challenging one. You know, listening to all this, I can't help but think, where's the line between impulsivity and, say, addiction? Mm -hmm. Because the source mentions substance abuse, but it also talks about things like spending sprees and risky behaviors, which mm -hmm can also have that addictive quality. That's a great observation. There are definitely some overlaps. Both impulsivity and addiction mm -hmm. involve that drive for immediate gratification, that inability to resist urges even when you know there will be negative consequences. And in some cases, impulsivity can actually be a risk factor for developing an addiction. So someone who's highly impulsive might be more likely to experiment with drugs or gambling and then get hooked because they struggle with that impulse control. Exactly. And it becomes this vicious cycle. The addiction fuels the impulsivity and the impulsivity makes it harder to break free from the addiction. This is all pretty heavy stuff. But it's so important to understand. It is. I think the source does a great job of pulling back the curtain on impulsivity, showing us how it works, how it manifests in different ways, and how it impacts people's lives. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And while it can be tempting to judge or dismiss impulsive behavior, I think this deep dive encourages us to approach it with more understanding and compassion. Because at the end of the day, impulsivity is often a symptom of something deeper, whether it's emotional distress, a personality disorder, or even an underlying addiction. Well said. We've covered a lot of ground today, from defining impulsivity and exploring its roots in different personality types to understanding its real-world consequences, and even touching on strategies for protecting yourself. But before we wrap up, I want to bring it back to our listener. Yeah. Why should they care about all this? Mm. How can this knowledge be helpful in their own lives? That's a great question. I think this deep dive highlights just how pervasive impulsivity can be, even if we don't always recognize it. It's not just about those extreme cases or personality disorders. Okay. We all experience moments of impulsivity. To some degree. To some degree, yeah. So it's not about labeling ourselves or others, but more about developing that awareness. Precisely. And by understanding the underlying mechanisms, the triggers, the potential consequences, mm. we can start to make more informed choices in our own lives. Like, next time I'm tempted to buy those shoes I definitely don't need, I might pause and think, okay, is this an impulsive urge or is this a purchase I've actually thought about? Exactly. Or if you find yourself constantly interrupting others in conversations, maybe it's a sign to work on that impulse control. And perhaps even recognizing those patterns in others can help us navigate relationships more effectively. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with a friend or partner who's highly impulsive, understanding those underlying drivers can help you approach the situation with more patience, more compassion. Right. And as we talked about earlier, setting those boundaries is key to protecting yourself. 
It's all about creating those healthier, more fulfilling connections, both with ourselves and the people around us. Right. And remembering that we're all works in progress. None of us are perfect and we all have our moments of impulsivity. But by understanding it better, we can learn to manage it and create more positive outcomes in our lives. All right. We're just about out of time for today. Any final thoughts you want to leave our listeners with? You know, I, I think one thing that's really important to remember is that impulsivity isn't always a bad thing. In fact, it can be a source of creativity, spontaneity, and even courage. Ooh, that's an interesting twist. I was so focused on the negative aspects that I hadn't even considered the positive side of impulsivity. Right. Think about it. Sometimes that gut feeling, that sudden urge to do something unexpected, can lead to amazing opportunities. It might be impulsively deciding to go to that networking event where you meet your future business partner. Oh, yeah. Or taking a chance on a last-minute trip that turns into the adventure of a lifetime. So it's not about eradicating impulsivity altogether, but more about understanding it, recognizing when it's helpful, and learning to manage it when it's not. Exactly. It's about finding that balance. And I think that's where self-awareness comes in. The more we understand our own patterns and triggers, the better equipped we are to make conscious choices about when to embrace impulsivity and when to rein it in. That makes so much sense. You know, as you were talking about the positive side of impulsivity, I was thinking back to the source and how it focused on those big dramatic examples of impulsive behavior, like relationship blowups and financial recklessness. Right. But what about the more subtle ways impulsivity can sneak into our lives? Uh -huh. The everyday stuff that might not seem like a big deal in the moment, but can add up over time. Ah, you're talking about those everyday impulses. We've been talking about the earthquakes, but what about those little tremors? Yes, exactly. Like how often do we interrupt someone in a conversation because we just have to get our thought out? Oh. Or online shop when we're feeling down, even though our bank account is screaming, no! Exactly. Or snapping at a loved one when we're stressed or procrastinating on a big project because we'd rather scroll through social media. Mm -hmm. Those little acts of impulsivity might not seem as dramatic, but they can still have a negative impact on our relationships, our goals, and even our sense of self-worth. It's like the difference between a flash flood and a slow leak. Both can cause damage, but the slow leak is often harder to detect until it's too late. So the challenge I'm leaving you with today is this. Start paying attention to those subtle impulses in your own life. Where do you find yourself reacting without thinking? Yeah. Where do you give in to that urge for instant gratification, even if it might not be the best choice in the long run. That's such a valuable exercise wow. because by becoming aware of those patterns, we can start to make more conscious choices. It's like shining a light on those blind spots, those moments where impulsivity might be driving the bus without us even realizing it. It's not about beating ourselves up though, right? Oh. It's about understanding and then making different choices. Exactly. This isn't about judgment. It's about self-compassion and growth. Mm. We all have impulses. Right. And that's okay. What matters is how we respond to them. This has been such an insightful deep dive. I feel like I have a whole new perspective on impulsivity now, seeing it not just as a problem to be solved, but as a complex aspect of human behavior that can be both challenging and empowering. I agree. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you and our listeners today. And to all of you listening out there, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into impulsivity. We hope you've learned something new, gained some insights, and maybe even had a few aha moments along the way. Remember, knowledge is power and understanding ourselves and others better is always a good thing. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those deep dives going. We'll see you next time for another fascinating deep dive into a new topic. Until then, take care. It can be incredibly messy. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Impulsivity by its very nature uh -huh. means actions are taken yeah. without considering uh -huh. those consequences. Right. So those consequences, well, yeah. they tend to pile up. And the source doesn't shy away from that at all. No. It talks about how impulsivity can impact relationships, yeah. finances, careers, you name it. Oh, absolutely. It's like this ripple effect that spreads out and touches every aspect of somebody's life. It's like a storm that sweeps through. Yeah. Right? Leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Wow. R relationships are strained or broken. Financial stability is jeopardized. Careers are derailed. Uh. It's a lot for anyone to deal with both 
For the person struggling with the impulsivity yeah. and those around them. And for those loved ones, yeah. the source really highlights that constant anxiety oh, for sure. of not knowing what's coming next. Right. Like walking on eggshells, always bracing for that next impulsive act. Right, because there's this underlying fear, like what's going to happen next? Will they spend all of our savings on a whim? Oh, God. Will they suddenly disappear for a week without a word? Right. Will they say something hurtful in the heat of the moment that they later regret? That unpredictability can be incredibly draining yeah. and damaging to relationships. You know, it's interesting because the source also talks about the internal experience of the person struggling with impulsivity. Right. It's not like they're doing these things just to cause chaos. Right. There's often a temporary sense of relief or satisfaction after acting on an impulse, right? Absolutely. In that moment, it can feel like a release. Oh. A way to escape discomfort or satisfy a craving. Right. But as the source points out, that feeling is usually fleeting. Yeah. It's followed by the crash, the consequences, mm -hmm. the guilt, the shame. Yeah. And yet they often get caught in this cycle. Right. Seeking that short-lived relief. Yeah. Even though it leads to more problems down the line. So it's almost like their emotional state is hijacking their ability to think clearly about the long-term consequences. Exactly. And that's what makes breaking free from this cycle so challenging. Yeah. The underlying drivers, you know, yeah. the need for control, the fear of vulnerability, the craving for validation, yeah. those are still there, fueling the impulsive behavior. It makes you wonder, what can you do if you're dealing with someone who's highly impulsive? Hmm. Is there any way to navigate that situation without constantly feeling like you're on edge? It's a tough question, yeah. and the source offers some really practical advice on this. It stresses the importance of setting clear boundaries okay. to protect yourself from the impact of their behavior. So it's not about controlling them, because you can't, right. but controlling your own reactions and protecting your own well-being. Exactly. It's about recognizing that their impulsivity is their struggle, and you can't fix it for them. Right. But you can create a space for yourself where you're not constantly on edge yeah. waiting for the other shoe to drop. But setting boundaries can be hard. It can be. Especially when it's someone you care about. Yeah. Did the source offer any advice on how to actually do that? Because I think a lot of people struggle with that. The source doesn't go into specifics about how to set boundaries. It's more about the importance of having them in place. Right. But I think one key aspect is communication. Okay. Clearly and calmly explaining how their impulsive actions impact you. Right and what you're willing and not willing to tolerate. Yeah. So for example, if someone's constantly borrowing money and not paying it back, a boundary might be, I'm happy to help when I can, but I'm no longer comfortable lending you money until you've repaid what you already owe. Exactly. It's about being firm, compassionate, and consistent. Right. And remember, setting boundaries is not selfish. It's a way to protect yourself and maintain a healthy relationship, even if it's a challenging one. You know, listening to all this, I can't help but think, yeah. where's the line between impulsivity and, say, addiction? Mm. Because the source mentions substance abuse, right? but it also talks about things like spending sprees yeah. and risky behaviors, yeah. which can also have that addictive quality. That's a great observation. There are definitely some overlaps. Yeah. Both impulsivity and addiction involve that drive for immediate gratification, that oh. inability to resist urges, even when you know, there will be negative consequences. Right. And in some cases, impulsivity can actually be a risk factor for developing an addiction. So someone who's highly impulsive might be more likely to experiment with drugs or gambling and then get hooked because they struggle with that impulse control. Exactly. And it becomes this vicious cycle. Yeah. The addiction fuels the impulsivity. Right. And the impulsivity makes it harder to break free from the addiction. This is all pretty heavy stuff. It is. But it's so important to understand. It is. I think the source does a great job of pulling back the curtain on impulsivity. Yeah. Showing us how it works, how it manifests in different ways, and how it impacts people's lives. Absolutely. And while it can be tempting to judge or dismiss impulsive behavior, right. I think this deep dive encourages us to approach it with more understanding and compassion. Right. Because at the end of the day, impulsivity is often a symptom of something deeper. Yeah. Whether it's emotional distress, a personality disorder, or even an underlying addiction. Well said. We've covered a lot of ground today. We have. From defining impulsivity and exploring its roots in different personality types to understanding its real world consequences and even touching on strategies for protecting yourself. Yeah. But before we wrap up, I want to bring it back to our listener. Okay. 
Why should they care about all this? Mm -hmm. How can this knowledge be helpful in their own lives? That's a great question. Yeah. I think this deep dive highlights just how pervasive impulsivity can be. Okay. Even if we don't always recognize it. Right. It's not just about those extreme cases or personality disorders. Right. We all experience moments of impulsivity. To some degree. To some degree, yeah. To some degree, yeah. So it's not about labeling ourselves or others, but more about developing that awareness. Precisely. Yeah. And by understanding, you know, the underlying mechanisms, yeah. the triggers, the potential consequences. Right. We can start to make more informed choices in our own lives. Like next time I'm tempted to buy those shoes I definitely don't need. I might pause and think, okay, is this an impulsive urge or is this a purchase I've actually thought about? Exactly. Or if you find yourself constantly interrupting others in conversations, maybe it's a sign to work on that impulse control. And perhaps even recognizing those patterns in others can help us navigate relationships more effectively. Absolutely. If you're dealing with a friend or partner who's highly impulsive, understanding those underlying drivers can help you approach the situation with more patience and more compassion. Yeah. And... As we talked about earlier, setting those boundaries is key to protecting yourself. It's all about creating those healthier, more fulfilling connections, both with ourselves and the people around us. Right. And remembering that we're all works in progress. None of us are perfect. Oh, no. And we all have our moments of impulsivity. For sure. But by understanding it better, we can learn to manage it and create more positive outcomes in our lives. All right. We're just about out of time for today. Okay. Any final thoughts you want to leave our listeners with? You know, I think one thing that's really important to remember is that impulsivity isn't always a bad thing. In fact, it can be a source of creativity, right. spontaneity, and Wait. even courage. Ooh, that's an interesting twist. Yeah. I was so focused on the negative aspects that I hadn't even considered the positive side of impulsivity. Right. Think about it. Sometimes that gut feeling, that sudden urge to do something unexpected can lead to amazing opportunities. All right. It might be impulsively deciding to go to that networking event where you meet your future business partner or taking a chance on a last minute trip that turns into the adventure of a lifetime. So it's not about eradicating impulsivity altogether, but more about understanding it, recognizing when it's helpful and learning to manage it when it's not. Exactly. It's about finding that balance. And I think that's where self-awareness comes in. The more we understand our own patterns and triggers, the better equipped we are to make conscious choices about when to embrace impulsivity and when to rein it in. That makes so much sense. You know, as you were talking about the positive side of impulsivity, I was thinking back to the source uh. and how it focused on those big, dramatic examples of impulsive behavior, right. like relationship blowups and financial recklessness. But what about the more subtle ways impulsivity can sneak into our lives? Oh, yeah. The everyday stuff that might not seem like a big deal in the moment, but can add up over time. Ah, you're talking about those everyday impulses. We've been talking about the earthquakes, but what about those little tremors? Yes. Exactly. Like how often do we interrupt someone in a conversation because we just have to get our thought out? Yeah. Or online shop when we're feeling down, even though our bank account is screaming no. Exactly. <laughs> or snapping at a loved one when we're stressed or procrastinating on a big project because we'd rather scroll through social media. Those little acts of impulsivity might not seem as dramatic, but they can still have a negative impact on our relationships, our goals, and even our sense of self-worth. It's like the difference between a flash flood and a slow leak. Both can cause damage, but the slow leak is often harder to detect until it's too late. So the challenge I'm leaving you with today is this. Start paying attention to those subtle impulses in your own life. Where do you find yourself reacting without thinking? Where do you give in to that urge for instant gratification, even if it might not be the best choice in the long run? That's such a valuable exercise. Because by becoming aware of those patterns, we can start to make more conscious choices. It's like shining a light on those blind spots, those moments where impulsivity might be driving the bus without us even realizing it. It's not about beating ourselves up, though, right? You know, it's about understanding and then making different choices. Exactly. This isn't about judgment. It's about self-compassion and growth. We all have impulses, and that's okay. What matters is how we respond to them. This has been such an insightful deep dive. It has. I feel like I have a whole new perspective on impulsivity now, seeing it not just as a problem to be solved, but as a complex aspect of human behavior that can be both challenging and empowering. I agree. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you and our listeners today. And to all of you listening out there, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into impulsivity. We hope you've learned something new, gained some insights, and maybe even had a few aha moments along the way. 
Remember, knowledge is power, and understanding ourselves and others better is always a good thing. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those deep dives going. We'll see you next time for another fascinating deep dive into a new topic. Until then, take care.